Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super simple slipper socks. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course hit the notification bell so that you never miss out on another of my free crochet patterns or my crochet tutorials again. Now this super simple slipper sock is worked flat and then seamed all the way up. So it really is the easiest slipper sock pattern available. Let's gather our materials that we need to make these slipper socks. Now I'm going to be using, um, which is James C. Brett's Lazy Day, which is a super chunky yarn. Now it asks for us to use, she says, where's it gone? An eight millimeter crochet hook, but we're going to be using a six millimeter so that we minimize any holes that might appear in our pattern to keep our feet super snugly. So this is a bit of a blended yarn, I believe. Yes, it is 80% um, acrylic and 20% polyamide. So it is really soft and really squishy. Um, this, I'm not sure what the shade is of this. I'll pop it in the description box for you. It might have the shade color on here. Yes, it is LD12 um, and it is possibly my new favorite yarn because I think it's gonna look wonderful in lots of different patterns. So we've got our yarn, which is a super chunky and that asks for an eight millimeter crochet hook. I have a six millimeter crochet hook that we are gonna work with. I've got a darning needle and I'm gonna change that for a chunky darning needle. So it's got a bigger hole, um, bigger eye of the needle and a pair of scissors as well. So grab whatever shade you're gonna be using and we can get started. So let's get started. You'll find the written pattern over on my blog where you can find all the different sizes. Um, the pattern is sized for um, size uh, shoe sizes, so three to four. These are adult sizes. So adult size three to four, size five to six, seven to eight, and nine to 10. Today, we're going to make a size five to six together, and you can find all the difference in the sizes on that written post over on my blog. And you can also find um, the link to purchase the pattern as well over on my blog too. So to start, we're going to make a slip knot. And then we're going to pop that onto our hook. If you're not sure how to make a slip knot, you can head over to my other video. I will link it in the description box below for you. So we're going to start by making a chain of 13. So we yarn over the hook and bring that through the loop on our hook 13 times. So that was number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, and chain number 13. So we're starting with a chain of 13, and we're going to work down this chain going under just one loop of the chain because we'll work on the other side when we add the brim of the sock. I'm not really sure what to call that bit, the bit that goes around the ankle at the end once the, the sock is all sewn up. So we're gonna start by working into the second chain from the hook. So not this one, remembering the one on our hook doesn't count. We're not gonna work into the first one. We're going to yarn over and place our first stitch into that second chain from hook. And we're going to be placing a half treble crochet in UK terms, half double crochet in US terms. So yarn over the hook, insert your hook into that first, second chain from hook, yarn over, bring a loop up. So you should have your three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We're not gonna work into that space because we've just worked into there. We're gonna to continue to work down our chain, placing a half treble crochet into each chain along. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook, into the chain, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. So we're going to do that for a total of 12 stitches on row one. The stitch count is the same for all sizes. So even if you've got a slightly wider foot, it's okay because it's quite a stretchy fabric that we're going to be making. So the width of the shoe or your shoe size doesn't really matter that much. Just continue to place a half treble crochet into each of the chains along.
Now, if you're not super confident about knowing where your first and your last stitches are, you can place a stitch marker in your first and your last so you can remember exactly where they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So I've got my twelve stitches. So this is the widest part of the sock. You're thinking, wow, my foot is not that small. Don't worry, because what's going to happen is, is our piece is going to be long. We're going to fold it up. So this is the widest point of, say, the top of your foot. So with row one, we have a total of 12 half treble crochets in UK terms, half double crochets in US terms. Going into row two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to work back along, placing a half treble crochet into each stitch across. So this chain one does not count as a stitch. So we are going to work into that stitch right underneath where we place that chain one. So we're gonna go in underneath that V there. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, put three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So if you want to place a stitch marker in that first stitch that you've made, I would do that now so you don't get confused. Otherwise, we can continue to place a half treble crochet in the remaining 11 stitches. So at the end of this row, you should still have 12 stitches. I told you it was super simple, didn't I? Just half treble crochets all the way along this row. So this section of the super simple slipper sock is the same again for all shoe sizes. So it doesn't matter if you're doing a size three to four or a size nine to 10, this part is all the same. And that should be number 12. Have a quick count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, A. Eh? <laughs> one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Oh, that worried me then. So it's always worth double checking that we've got the right stitch count. So going into round three, we're going to, sorry, row three, we're going to chain one and turn. Now rows three to eight are all identical. All the way up to row number eight, we are going to have a stitch count of 12 and we're going to place a half treble crochet into each stitch along for a total of eight rows. So we're going into row three here. So keep working all the way up until the end of row eight, and then we're going to change our stitch. So I will meet you at the end of row eight. Okay, so I've reached my last stitch in row eight. I'm just going to place that one there for you. So going into row nine, we are actually beginning the ankle part of, is it the ankle? No, it's the heel, that's the word. So reaching the heel section of our super simple slipper sock. So this is actually going to be the bit that goes um, around the back of your heel. So going into row nine, we are simply going to chain one, and then this time we're going to double crochet in UK terms or single crochet in US terms all the way along those 12 stitches. So we've chained one and remembering that chain does not count as a stitch, we're going to go straight into that stitch underneath the chain, yarn over, bring a loop up. So we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. We're going to place a double crochet into each stitch across. So we should have a total of 12 stitches at the end of row nine. Should count as I go really, shouldn't I? So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, that was my dog, sorry, 11 and 12. 
So at the end of row nine, we shall have a total of 12 double crocheted stitches or single crochet stitches in US terms. We're going to chain one going into row 10. This is the first row that we're going to decrease along our heel section. Now we're going to do our decreases internally. So we're not going to place our decrease in that first stitch. We're going to do it over the next two stitches. And the reason that we do that is because it prevents any massive holes showing um, in the side of your slipper. So we've chained one. We're going to place a double crochet or a single crochet in that first stitch. Then over the next two stitches, we're going to place a double crochet two together or a single crochet two together. So we insert our hook into the first stitch, we yarn over, bring a loop up, we insert our hook into the next stitch that we want to decrease over, yarn over, bring another loop up. So we've got three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that puts those two stitches into one. We're then going to double crochet across the next, how many stitches? six stitches. So that's one, two. So we're already down to four stitches instead of five. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have three stitches remaining. And we're going to put these two, two, these two, two, these stitches together and then we're going to double crochet into the last stitch. So this stitch, over the next two stitches, we're going to um, put those together. So we do that one together again. Going to insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up from that first stitch. Insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up. Got those three loops on our hook. Going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to decrease that stitch count by one. And then we're going to place our final double crochet in that last stitch. So let's have a quick count of these stitches because we started with row nine with 12 and we should now have only 10 stitches because we've decreased on each end of this row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we've decreased by two stitches, one stitch at each end of our row. So let's go on to row 11 and this time we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to decrease at each end of our row. So we're going to start our row by working into this stitch here, replacing a double crochet or a single crochet in US terms. And then we're going to double crochet two together on over the next two stitches. So we insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook to decrease by one. We're then going to place a double crochet across the next four stitches. So that's one, two, three, and four. So we should have three stitches remaining. One, two, three. These two, we're going to place a single crochet two together or a double crochet two together. We insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, bring that loop up, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook and then finish this row with a final double crochet in that last stitch. So our stitch count should now have gone down to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Fabulous. Let's go on to row 12, and I'm pretty much going to guess you can tell what we're going to do in this row. We're going to chain one and turn. Again, we're going to place a double crochet or a single crochet into that first stitch. We're then going to decrease over the next two stitches. So yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, bring another loop up, and pull through all three stitches. We're going to double crochet into the next two stitches. That's number one and number two. We have our three stitches remaining. So we're going to decrease across the next two stitches. 
and end the row with a double crochet in the final stitch. So our stitch count's gone down by another two, so we should have six stitches remaining. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Going into row 13, once again, going to chain one and turn. So we're going to place a double crochet into that first stitch. This time we're going to have to double crochet over these two stitches straight away as normal. So we're going to bring those two stitches together. We've only got three stitches left, so we're going to decrease once again. In that next two stitches and end the row with a double crochet. So that leaves us with one, two, three and four stitches at the end of row 13. That's enough decreasing at the moment, so we're going to chain one and turn. And row 14, very, very simple. We're just going to place a double crochet into each stitch across. Number three. And number four. Let's have a look to see what this little lumpy bit of yarn is. The big fat mess. We shall use that, it will be fine. It's in the heel, so we won't be able to feel it. So this row that we've done here is just a normal plain row for row 14. And now going into row 15, we're going to start increasing back up to the size of 12 stitches. So this all remains the same when we're placing this heel in for any size that we're doing. So ignoring the state of my yarn, we're going to just place, uh, we're going to do internal increases this time. So we're not going to increase on the first stitch, we're going to put them in the middle so that we can make sure that we're preventing as many holes as possible. So straight in, we've chained one, we're going to place a double crochet into that first stitch. Make sure I've got all that rubbish, there we are. And then into the next stitch, we're going to work two double crochets. So we're going to increase by placing two of the same stitch into the same stitch. So we're going to insert our hook, we're going to yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, all pretty normal, yep. We're going to place another stitch into the same stitch we've just worked into to create our increase. So we literally, oh, excuse me, squeaking there, we just literally place two double crochets into that same stitch. And we're going to repeat that in the next stitch as well. So we yarn over, bring a loop up, pull through two, and place another stitch into that same stitch that you've just worked into. We're going to end the row by just placing a final double crochet into that last stitch. So we've increased um, twice, so we've added two stitches on, so we should have six at the end of row. What are we on now? Goodness me, row 15 already. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's my chain, ignore that. So we're going to yarn over and chain one and turn. Going into row six, we're going to start by placing a double crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to place two double crochets into the next. So we're going to place two double crochets or single crochets into that next stitch along. So over those two stitches, we now have three, one, two, and three. We're going to double crochet into the next two stitches. So one and two. In the next stitch, we're going to place two double crochets. So we're increasing again in that next stitch along just by working two of the same into that stitch. Then in your final stitch, just place a double crochet. So now we should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Wonderful. Going into row 17, we're going to increase again. So we start by chaining one, placing a double crochet into the first stitch. We place two double crochets or two single crochets into that next stitch along. 
number one and number two. And then we place a double crochet in the next four stitches. So number two, number three, and number four. We're then going to place two stitches into that next stitch. And of course we end the row with a stitch or a double crochet, single crochet into the last stitch. So we should now have a total of 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Wonderful. Going into row 18, can you guess what we're going to do? We are going to start by chaining one, inserting that hook and placing one double crochet or single crochet into that first. Of course, we're going to place two in here to increase it on this end. Then going to place a double crochet into the next six stitches. Three. Four, five, and eight, nine, six. There we go. We're going to then place two double crochets or single crochets into the next stitch to increase again. And then finally, one double crochet into the last stitch. And that takes our stitch count all the way back up to 12. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Fabulous. So already we have we've made our the back of our leg on and our heel. So whichever size you've been making, it's all the same up to this point. This is where it's going to change ever so slightly depending on which size you're making. Now I'm making a size five to six. So I am going to work a different number of rows compared to say a size nine to 10. So the difference, what we're working on now is going to be the sole of the foot. So I'm trying to explain a little bit as we go along as to how we're gonna sew this up. So it's going to be all the way to the toe section we're going to be working next. So, if you want to check out the different rows, you can head over to my blog post where you'll find the free written pattern. Um, you can also purchase and download the pattern from there as well. So we're going to chain one and we're going into row 19. So row 19 is the same whichever size you're doing, just the total number of rows, rows for the sole that will differ depending on what size. So for size five to six, we're going and all the other sizes, we're all going back into working half treble crochets or half double crochets. So we yarn over the hook first and then insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, got three loops on our hook and yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to place a half treble crochet into each stitch across for a total of for size five to six is going to be between rows 19 and 31. Now I'm not great at counting my rows so what I'm going to do is before I proceed, I'm going to place um, just underneath the chain of this row, I'm going to place a stitch marker so I can tell where my stitches have changed um, so that I can count my rows easier. Now I know this is row 19, which is where this stitch marker is. So I'm going to continue to place a total of, um, I don't know, I'm not very good at adding up. So <laughs> I'm going to get up to row 31 for my size five to six placing a half treble crochet into each stitch across. As I said, if you need to check out the row sizes needed for sizes three to four, uh, seven to eight or nine to 10, you can find them over on the blog there as well. There's a link in the description box below for you. Oops. So I'm going to meet you back when I have reached the end of row 31. So I need to do a total of 12 rows. Gosh, I'm really bad at math, sorry. So you keep working through to the number of rows that you need to do for the size that you're making. If you're making a size five to six, I will meet you back here at the end of row 31.
So I'm just working the last two rows of my row 31, because I'm doing a size five to six. Remember, if you need to check how many rows you need to do, head on over to the blog post, there's links below, and it will tell you exact, exactly how many you need. So I should have, still have a stitch count of 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And there's number 12. So from here, we're going to start our row count again. From this point, the toe is worked exactly the same, regardless of which size you're making. So we're going to restart without detaching our yarn. We're going to start from row one again. So row one, we're going to chain one. And we're going to place a double crochet or a single crochet into each stitch along, just as we did before for the heel. So the toe is actually worked identically to, or exactly the same as, the toe is worked. So just simply place 12 single crochets in the US terms or double crochets in the UK terms. One in each stitch along. So we should still have a stitch count of 12 at the end of our new row one. Wonderful. If you did want to check the sizing on your sock and you're making it for yourself, if you were to pop your foot in now, your heel would be about here and this should be just where your toes start, if that makes sense, coming out of your foot. Um, so this should be the length, from here to here would be the length of the sole of your foot. And now we're working to decrease for our toe section. So at the end of row one, we'll have our 12 double crochets in UK terms or single crochets in US terms. Going into row 12, we're going to chain one. And we're going to start decreasing again exactly the same way that we did in that first stitch we're going to place one double crochet or single crochet and then we're going to decrease across the next two stitches so we insert the hook into the first stitch we yarn over to bring up a loop then we insert our hook into the next stitch yarn over bring a loop up We've got these three loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to decrease by one we're then going to place a double crochet in the next six stitches across. Should have been counting, shouldn't I? One, two, three, four, five. Oops. And number six. So we should have three stitches remaining. We're going to decrease across the next two stitches. So we insert the hook into the first stitch, bring up a loop, insert the hook again into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Going to yarn over and we pull through all three loops to complete that decrease. We finish the row by placing a double crochet in that last stitch. So we've reduced our stitch count by two, so we should have 10 stitches remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Going into row three, of our toe section, we're going to decrease by two again. So we start by placing our double crochet and then we decrease across the next two stitches. We place a double crochet into the next four stitches across. It's number two, three and four. We have three stitches remaining. Over the next two, we're going to decrease across those. And place a double crochet or a single crochet, sorry, um, in that last stitch. So we have reduced our stitch count again by two. So we should be down to eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Wowzers, we are already going into row four. Um, it's all the same again. So we're going to place a double crochet into that first stitch there. And then once again, we are going to decrease across the next two stitches. We're going to place a double crochet into the next two stitches. We've got three stitches remaining. 
So we're going to decrease across the next two stitches and end the row with another double crochet at the end. Now we're down to six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to chain one, going into row five of our toe, going to decrease again. So we start by placing that first double crochet, decrease across the next two stitches, and we're going to decrease straight away into the next two stitches. and then place our final double crochet into that last stitch. I grabbed one side of that hook, there we go. So we should be down to four stitches. Just like we did with the heel, we're going to chain one and then for row six, we are going to place a double crochet into each stitch along. number four. We're going to chain one and already we're going to start increasing again. So we in, um, place a double crochet or a single crochet into that first stitch and then into the next stitch we're going to place two double crochets or two doubles, two single crochets, sorry, into the same stitch. So exactly where we've worked before, reinsert that hook and work another stitch. We're going to do that into the next stitch as well. Going to place two double crochets or two single crochets into the same stitch. So we've got two stitches in that one stitch there. And then we end the row just by placing that final stitch in there. So by adding on two stitches, we should now have a stitch count of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Wonderful. Going into row eight, going to chain one and turn. Just like we did before, we're going to place a double crochet right underneath that chain. And then we're going to place two double crochets or two single crochets into that next stitch. Both worked into the same stitch. Going to double crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're going to increase again in that next stitch. So these are internal increases. It just prevents these the holes showing too much when you're wearing your sock. You've got to keep our feet warm. But in that last stitch, I'm just going to place another double crochet. Chain one and turn. Oh, I didn't check my stitch count. I'm sure you've got eight as well, haven't you? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Whew. So we're going to turn, going into row nine. We're still going to increase in this one as well. So we're going to start by placing that first stitch and then into the next one we're going to increase. So we work two double crochets or two single crochets into the same stitch. Then across the next um, four stitches. We're going to place a double crochet or a single crochet into each one of those. We can't count today, sorry. There we go. And then we're going to increase. So we're going to work two stitches into that same space and then place our final stitch to complete the row. So we should now, we've increased twice again, so we should have 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Going into row ten, we're going to increase once again. So we start by placing our first stitch and then place two more into that same stitch, into the second one. We're going to place a double crochet into the next six stitches. One, oops, two, three, four, five, and six. 
We're then going to crochet, uh, increase again, sorry. So we're going to put two of the same, two, work two into the same stitch and then end our row with a double crochet. So we should be back up to a total of 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Wonderful. So we should be, I don't know how to describe this shape, but you can see how it's starting to form a slipper shape. I promise it's what it looks like. I'll take my hook out, it'll be a little bit easier. So we've now got a toe section. We've got the sole of our foot and the back of our leg. So the last part to do is to work the whole top of the sock. Again, this is where it differs depending on which size you've made. So head on over to the blog to check the number of rows you're going to need for the next section. If you are making a, um, what are we doing, size five to six, you're going to be doing the same number of rows as I will be. So we're going into row number 11, whichever, whichever size we're doing. But rows five to six, you are doing from rows 11 all the way up to 31. Even I can work that one out, that is 20 rows. So it's different depending on which size you're working on. So please do go and check that over on the blog and I will catch up with you. So we're going into the half treble crochets now in row 11, all the way up to row 31 for the size five to six. And I'm going to catch up with you just at the end of row 31, ready to fasten off and sew up. Now do not get too um, cut happy when it comes to finishing your row, your final row. Hang on for a second, because I'm going to tell you exactly how long you're going to need to sew up the whole sock in one go. Because I hate weaving in ends, and I'm sure you do too. So I'd like to make it as simple as possible. Once we've sewn up our sock, we are going to, so before I do anything else, I'm going to place my stitch marker in there because I really hate counting. There we go. So I know which row I'm on. So that was my first row. Makes my life easier and I can count. Um, once we've sewn up the sock, we're going to go ahead and add on the ribbing on the around the ankle of the sock. And that will make it nice and snug without making it too tight. So keep on working. If you're doing a size five to six, you're going up to row 31. If you're doing any of the other sizes, please head on over to the blog post where you will see how many rows you need to do for the top of the foot. And I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I have just finished row 31 from the toe section. And I've just done a little chain one before I fasten off because that'll make a little knot there for us. Move my crochet hook out of the way because we are done with our hook. Um, you should be looking something a little bit like that at the moment. So the first thing we need to do is to fasten off enough yarn so that we can sew the whole slipper up in one go. So the way I do it is I'm going to literally do, I'm going to go to the other end and do three lengths of my slipper and that will be sufficient to sew up. Just snip that off, get rid of my yarn, I'm gonna grab my hook and just pull that long tail all the way through to secure that there. So as you can see, I've gathered a few stitch markers. I'm hoping I won't need that many because what we have now is the start of our sock. So the first thing we're going to do, doesn't matter which way you do this, Going to bring my tail towards the back for a moment. We're going to bring together the two ends effectively of the slipper sock and I'm just going to pin those together with a stitch marker. Just in that top stitch of the first row and I'm going to do that on each side. This will make your life easier when you're sewing up, I promise. So now we have something that looks a little bit like that. So going down to the toe section, you can see I've already got one stitch marker there where I started my counting. I'm just gonna put that through and secure that side of the toe and do the same on the other side. So 
and then we can do the same. We've got like a big ring now at the moment. We're gonna do the same with the heel section as well. So I'm just going to kind of match where the smaller stitches were and just secure those two rows together. And do the same on the other side. I've got so many different stitch markers. It doesn't matter which type you use, as long as they stay in where you need them to. So they're now secured. So this is where <laughs> it might feel a little bit difficult, but what we need to do is to kind of fold the sock, making sure the foot is flat. We need to join our sock so that it fits in to this section here. So you can either use, so it looks like you've got your, this is the top part, this is the, the whole long bit, and then you've got your heel here and the back of your foot. I'm up a little bit high on that one, I think. I'm just gonna take that out because I want my foot to be nice and flat. And I'm going to make sure that these two stay level and just bring those bits together and we're going to sew them up, you see, like that. So if you are if you can get all three onto one stitch marker, so much the better. But don't worry, I'm going to remind you as we're sewing that bit up. We're going to do that on each side. So we want to, again, just make sure it's all flat, that the top is level, and then bring that section into the heel. You can either use the same stitch marker or get another one. And just kind of pin them together. This is the most complicated bit, I promise. <laughs> because then we will have a sort of sock shape. So you've got your heel here at the back, you've got your toe, and you've got the top of your sock here. So to start sewing up, we're going to start where we just disconnected the yarn, and I have a chunky sewing needle here, as opposed to, I don't know what, I did my little one to show you the difference. No, oh there it is. So you can see the difference between these I mean, they're only little plastic needles, but they're good enough for sewing this up. And I'm just going to pop my yarn through my chunky eyed needle. It's going to be a lot of pulling through, but it will be worth it. We don't need any more of those stitch markers. You can place stitch markers all the way down if you want to make sure that you're hitting all of your matching rows. But it's entirely up to you how many you place. Moving that tail out of the way, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to just take this stitch marker out now that I've secured that together. I'm just simply going to start by running my hook, or my hook, my needle through where I started with my slip knot and just bring that yarn all the way through. We're going to whip stitch, so literally just go in one side and out the other. Don't have to go too deep through, just make sure you're not putting knots in. And we're just going to work our way all the way down the sock. This is probably going to potentially take you longer than actually making the sock because we want to make sure, so you can pull on it gently and it will just secure that. And just keep working your way down. And then I'll show you how to do the heel and the toe as well, because we want to, to reinforce those ever so slightly. So you're working into each row along, making sure that you're sewing up reasonably tightly without moving the, without it kind of bunching up. If 
If you're ever unsure about whether or not you've sewn up properly, if that makes sense, you can just pop your hand through the top just to make sure you're not creating any gaps as well. I'm just going to hold that up just while I do these last few before I get to the heel. Stitch mark is annoying. There we go. I'm just pulling it every now and again just to kind of cinch those stitches in. Oh, me. So when we reach the point of where our sock is going to join the heel, I'm going to start by doing a stitch through there. This stitch marker needs to go. Then I'm going to go I'll take that out because it's irritating me. Then I'm going to go through where the heel meets. So I'm going to come through here and back out where I was. And then I'm going to come through here and back out again. Roughly where that went through. I'm not tying a knot, just to keep that out of the way. And that just brings those three sides together. Just going to pull on those gently so they're nice and snug. And then we're going to work down the heel to secure that. Come on through that. I don't want to do that. I'll do that again. There we go. There we go. And just keep working all the way down to join those two sides of the heel. And again, this is a good place to check um, that you have filled that in all the way down the heel. So pop your hook in. You see how I've got that hole there? We can catch that on the way back. But I'm just going to work into this bit here just to make sure that that's super secure. And then we're going to work back up the way we've just come, because I want to make sure that, that hole disappears. There's no exact science for this. We are simply just sewing it up, but we want to make it as toasty as possible. So if you need to catch a stitch next to it, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to do that on both sides. So I'm coming back up to where the join is. So I'm going to come just up through there for a moment. Give that just a gentle pull to make sure it's all nice and tight and secure. And that hole has now disappeared. And we're going to work back down towards the toe section. So we need to make sure that this is laying pretty much flat. So I'm just going to secure this side here. So this was, these are not joined currently because this is where this will be the weakest point. So we're going to make that nice and secure. There we go. And then we can work down the rest of the foot. Remembering to work into each row down. There we go. And keep checking if you're not happy with where you've sewn, pop your hand in and you can just double check that there's no holes at all. And we're just going to work all the way down to the toe. You see, I'm doing that every now and again. It's just to make sure that I'm working into the putting the right stitches, sewing the right rows together. Again, just give it a bit of a pull to make sure that that seam is nice and tight.
We're getting to the toe, I promise. We're nearly there. So in preparation of getting to this toe, I'm just going to slip this stitch marker out. Just finish off these last two because we are going to reinforce the toe as we go across it. So remember we did that row of four in between the increasing and the de decreasing. That was just to help us be able to reinforce this toe. Because obviously when we're if we are wandering about in these, we want them to be snug, we want them to be secure. On that note, if please don't walk down wooden stairs wearing these. <laughs> a bit of a disclaimer. So there we go. We have reached the toe. Hope you can see that. I'm going to pull on that to make sure it's secure. I'm just going to run my hand down just to make sure that they are there are no big holes and we are all the way up to the toe. So you've got a row here that we're going to sew across and join. The reason that we're doing that is because it will reinforce the toe nice and securely and help keep it really snug. We're not going in the hole, we're going in the stitch there. We don't want to make the hole any bigger. We're just going over that and through the stitch, not in the gap between the stitches, but just in the actual stitch. So it's going to have to push it through. And then we've already reached the last side to sew up. Now my side's popped undone which is fine because I'm now going all the way up to there. So I'm going to undo this other stitch marker. And again, we're going all the way up to this point here. This has come undone, so let me put another stitch marker in. So I'm just making those two there, that one there, making sure this is flat. There we go. That will not come undone now. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just going to sew up this side here, working from the toe around. I was going that way around, wasn't I? There we go. Again, just working through every single stitch across and up so that we can secure the second side of our sock. And just keep making sure that you're, you're happy with where you're placing your stitches. And that they're secure and they're tight, they're not got I'm just going making sure that you're going through every single row that you can. Go. My wool is starting to fray because I've moved it around so much. This means it won't come undone, which is always a joy. We're coming up towards that next heel section. And again, we're going to try and reinforce that as much as we can. It's where the most pressure from the, from the heel will come. So I mentioned about not walking down wooden stairs with these. So that goes for tiled floorings as well. If you do want to add, you can get... Um, you can either use a hot glue gun and just place some dots of hot glue on the base or on the sole of your, your sock um, just to prevent any slips if you want to. So I've just taken my stitch marker out because I've reached that fabulous point again um, where we're going to secure all these sides. So I'm just going to double check, make sure that this edge is lined up with that and that's lined up with that. 
going to start by securing here. And then I'm going to secure to the other side of the heel. I'm just making sure that they are even without having my wall tangle. Try that again. Making sure that they are even. And I'm going to go through this side. Pull that all the way through. Secure that snugly. And then I can go back through out the other side of the heel. And then I'm ready to work the heel. There we go. I'm just going to sew along the heel first of all. And I'm going to check for any holes. And make sure I've sewn those up snugly as well. As you can tell, I'm not a seamstress. I'm sure there's a lot neater way of doing this. But they are perfect for around the house. Okay, so let me just have a quick check for any holes in that heel. Well, apart from that massive one there, because I've missed that stitch. So it's always worth checking. Come through there. There we go. And then we're just going to work our way back up the heel again. So we're reinforcing it because we're going over it twice. Okay. And then we are ready to do a bit of jiggery pokery to get our needle to where we need it to be. So I'm going to come up where it's not joined there, just to secure it. And there we have our heel. So we just need to sew, sew up this final part here, and then we're ready to reattach our yarn to add our ribbing around our ankle to keep our sock snugly on. And of course, you just need to make a whole other sock. But these are relatively quick. So while I, while I sew these up, I'm going to tell you about something I learned about recently, which is called second sock syndrome, and which is why I made these socks in the first place, because they are considerably quicker um, and easier than any of the other sock patterns I've tried before. Because what happens is people tend to make one sock. Socks take a while to make, right? So the problem is that they make their one sock and the second sock syndrome is that the second sock never gets made. So I think it's good to know that we have a nice quick and easy sock pattern that we can make that doesn't take long and is very easy to make. I hope you agree because I certainly enjoy making these. So that is my sock sewn up. You can try this on if you're making it for yourself because I know you can't resist it. And in theory, if you lay it down like a sock, it looks like a sock, which is quite exciting, isn't it? So the only thing left to do now is to add on the ribbing. So I'm just going to tie a little knot here and cut this. I'm not going to cut this off yet because I'm going to weave these ends in as I make my ribbing. But to know that that's secure is always a good thing. And then we are ready to add on the ribbing across the top. So I'm going to grab my yarn again, just move those out of the way. And we're going to reattach the yarn in the same space where we just fastened off. We don't need that much. Done all this. So I'm going to insert my hook where I fastened off that yarn. I'm going to place the new yarn or the reattaching yarn back over my hook in a loop and just hold that out of the way as I bring my hook through. With my working yarn, I'm going to place that over my hook and just pull through to reattach with a slip knot. So very simply, we need to start by doing a chain one 
and we're going to place a half treble crochet into each stitch around. So we know that we had a stitch count of 12 on each row. You can also see that I'm working over my tails here to weave those in, which means that we will have a total of 24 half treble crochets all around. So you can see where your chain was. You've got what looks like a stitch that we can work into, which is just there. So we're going to place 24 half treble or half double crochets into each stitch and chain space across. Around even, working in the round now. I just realized that, sorry. So that's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops. Eleven and twelve. Thirteen. Get all of that. So once we have finished sewing up, I've just trimmed this down a bit, ready to weave that in. I'm just going to turn my sock so it's the right side out and my seam goes on the inside. Where's my toe? There it is. It certainly lays a little bit easier when it's turned the right side. So you should have your completed sock. And we are going to continue to add on now the ribbing to finish the brim of the sock. So I'm going to insert my hook where I fastened off the yarn, which is just there. There's my tail. And to reattach my yarn, I just place it over my hook with the tail at the back. I'm going to just bring that through with my working yarn going to yarn over the hook and pull through for a slip stitch. And I can just pull on my tail yarn to secure. So round one, we're going to chain one. And we're going to place a half treble or half double crochet into each stitch or chain around. So you can see, I'll move those out of the way, these stitches across here. And I'll show you how to identify the chains as we go. So just insert your hook into the stitch. I'm going to bring my tails over so I can weave them in as I go and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to do that into each stitch. So that's number two, three, four, five, Seven. I can move my tails out of the way now. Go inside. Seven. Oops. Oops. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Oh dear. Eleven. And 12. So that's the 12 stitches around. And this side we're going to be working into the chain. Remember I told you I need to work on one side? That's so that we can attach this along this way. So that's where my slip knot is. Again I'm going to take that tail and just bring it forward so I can work over that. And I'm just going to place a half treble or half double into each chain around. So that's number two, three, Four, 
And six, let's move that tail out of the way. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Love it when a plan comes together. There's number 11, and there's number 12. If for any reason you find Another stitch you need to work into, so like this one here, you could in theory work into that. I've got that space. It's not a real stitch. Um, it's possibly where I've not sewn it up properly. We all make mistakes, but we need an even number of stitches to do our ribbing. So if I'm going into round two, to finish this round one, we're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first, so not in this, chain here where this first stitch is we're going to slip stitch to join yarn's fraying sorry i'm not sure why splitting there we go so slip stitch to join and then chain one and we are ready to start round two so we are going to be placing a front post back post ribbing you may have already tried to use this before i do have tutorials specifically on this style of crocheting so we start by yarning over. We're gonna work around the posts as a post into the stitches. So this is a post stitch. So we're gonna do front post, back post, front post, back post. So yarn over your hook. We're going to insert our hook into this space from the front and back out the front. I'm gonna yarn over, bring it back through Still got our three loops on our hook as we would normally for a half treble crochet and then pull through all three loops on your hook. So that was a front post. The next stitch we're going to do is a back post. So we yarn over the hook and we're going to go in from the back. So come round the back of your work and back out the front around that post of this stitch here. So we want to go back out of the back. Yarn over. Bring your hook back through. You've still got your three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. So that was the back post. So for the front post, we go in through the front and back out of the front. So we yarn over the hook, insert from the front, come around the post stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. The next one we're going to do is the back. So we go in from the back. So we yarn over the hook, go round the back. So it comes out of the front of your work, back out through that space there, yarn over, bring your loop up, yarn over, pull through all three. And what you can see is happening is it brings one post forward, one back, one forward, one back. And that's what creates almost a form of mock ribbing. So the next one, we've done a back one because you can see that it's at the back of your work. We're going to come and do a front post. So it's from the front and back out the front. Yarn over, bring a loop up. Yarn over, pull through all three. So this one is front because it's towards the front of your work. We're going to go in from the back for the next one. You can see where we've just worked here. We're going to come through that hole there, through the back, out the back. Move that tail out of the way. Hang on one minute. I can do that one again because I've caught the wrong bit. Oops. So, oops. So yarn over, through the back, and out the back. Yarn over and pull through all three. You will be surprised how quick you get with these post stitches. I really like them. So we've done a back one. Let's go round the front. So we go in through the front of the work, back out of the front. Yarn over, bring a loop up. Yarn over, pull through all three. And then we're working around the back. So yarn over the hook, come round the back literally just where you've worked, back out the other side, yarn over, 
bring your hook up, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, I'm gonna do a front post. Oops. Followed by a back post. So we yarn over, go in from the back. For some reason I got used to when I was learning, I've got the front post so much quicker than the back post. I read it in a book and it confused me so much. <laughs> So I just remember front post through the front, back post from the back. That was a front, this is a back. And I think I, because I keep dropping that as well, it's, when I was learning it was the one I kept dropping the back one, because you have to angle your hook in a certain direction. So that was a back one through the front. And then round the back. That's the back one. This is a front one. I'm just going to repeat that the whole way around is do one front post, one back post, one front post. That's a back post. <laughs> and one front post. All the way around. So we're nearly there now. So back post always comes through the back. And a front post, you go in through the front. And this is why it has to be an even number, because you want to start on a front post and end on a back post on your round. So this is round two, and we're going to do one more round of front post, back post. So to finish this round, we're going to just join the yarn through the top of that first front post stitch. There we go. Just with a slip stitch. So we slip stitch to join the round. And then we chain one. So this time we're going to match what we've done before. So you can see here that this one is coming towards us. This is a front post, back post, front post, back post. And we're simply just going to repeat what we did by placing a front post around a front post and a back post around a back post. So with a front post, remembering you're coming through the front and you're going to pick up that one there. And with the back post, we go through the back and pick up that back post. And we just repeat that the whole way around. The first row is usually the, the one that takes the longest of doing front post, back post, as I call it, because you need to make sure that you're putting them in the right place. Many a time I've gone to do the second round, it's like, oh, that should have been a front post or that should have been a back post. So keep working all the way around, placing a back post or a front post. So this is the last bit, I promise. We're nearly done. Then you just have to make a whole other sock. And we're not going to suffer from that second sock syndrome. We are just going to get on and repeat this video and make our second sock. The arms are attacking me. There we go. Back post, front post. Back post. Oh, I'm sorry, my yarn is scratching across everything now. There we go. That was a back post. This is a front post. Back post. Front post. Back post. 
and a front post. Back post. Front post. And the final back post. So we're going to finish this round by slip stitching to the top of that first stitch. Just going to do a little chain one before I fasten off. And the last thing we need to do is just weave in those ends and any other ends. So where you've worked over your ends here, if you're not think, if you don't think they're secure enough, you can weave those in as well. So here is your completed slipper sock. Now I hope that if you need to go on and make a second one, you can just repeat this video again. Don't forget to check out the link in the description box for all the different sizes and the number of rows you need for those different sizes as well. And of course, once you're snuggled down, maybe reading a book and feeling super snuggly in your PJs and you've got your slipper socks on, please feel free to take a photo and show me you wearing your completed slipper socks. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please make sure that you've hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. And I hope to see you soon.